It's time, folks. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time right now for Fiddle for Duffers. Ep episode one, session one, something one. Here we go. <clears throat> so, it's going to be an informal weekly lesson for duffers, beginners, fools who want to play the fiddle. And I'm one of them. You have to be a fool to play the fiddle. It's really hard. <laughs> but it'll injure you in a hundred ways. But we're going to do it anyway, folks. Now, let me know. I've got a whole new setup here for my audio, so let me know if the sound is okay. There might be much I can do about it other than turn it up or down, but <clears throat> let me know. So, uh, let us proceed as if you had come to me with a new fiddle in hand and we're ready to learn to play some tunes. <clears throat> we call this at Allegheny Echoes, which is my favorite music camp in the whole world, they call that the raw beginner class, and it's literally for people who wander up and uh, have the fiddle and never played. And so we'll start at that point, but as we progress, there'll be more things of interest for people who play a little longer. People who are in the beginner class, beginner uh, uh, area, not the raw beginner area. Okay, so I think, can, can you hear me now? Hello from Iowa. Hey, Richard. Kim Harris. <laughs> all right. So all the usual suspects are here. Thomas, Kim, Paul, Sutton. How's it going, buddy? So this is the right time and place, yes. So here we go. So so let's first just talk a little bit about the fiddle. So uh, some some things you want to do. So if you're just if you just grabbed a fiddle that you know was your grandpa's or you had it under the bed, uh, or you just went out and bought one because you decided you want to learn to play, uh, I my advice to you is to rather than me going over how to set it up and any of that stuff because I'm not a luthier and I've never tried to mess with fiddles repair one ever. I'm not one of these people who has a room full of 100 fiddles that he tinkers on. So I would take my fiddle this week, if you have any doubts, to someone you know who plays, or a music store that knows something about violins. Uh, and so that'd be my advice to you, is take it to somebody. I do, I will say that uh, when we used to run our fiddle camp down in Bethel, <clears throat> Missouri, we once had, a few times we had an adult fiddle camp. In fact, they were going to do it this year. It had to be canceled, of course. But. And I remember a really nice woman came, and she had a violin that she brought, and she had taken a, you know, a bridge has to be cut. When you buy a bank for a bridge, it's always way too tall. So he, she just had basically a factory bridge, that unfitted bridge, shoved under her strings, and the strings were about a foot off the fingerboard here. If there was such a thing as a dobro fiddle, that's what that's what she would have had. It was a dobro fiddle. So uh, so you want to make sure, and it was unplayable. I actually had a spare bridge in my fiddle case that I loaned her. We popped in there. It was good enough so that she could actually play it. Because before that, it was utterly unplayable. So there's a whole lot of things that could be wrong with your fiddle that will make it a struggle. So make sure you get somebody to look at it. And if you just know someone who plays, even if they're just a tinkerer, uh, you know, just take it over to them and say, hey, saw around this, what do you think? Is it set up? okay that I won't hurt myself playing it. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things I think you need. I'm gonna post, in fact, I already posted on our Facebook page, fans of Possum's, Pat and Possum's Big Fiddle Show, uh, a link to an article I have on my website about gear. Uh, so if you wanna take a look at that, fine. I've just some things, some things I use. I think everything on there is something that I use or have used. Uh, so, but I, I think you need two things right away. And again, this is an opinion thing, so don't uh, don't get after me if your opinion's different or your buddy da or, or Bud down the road his his, his opinion's different. But uh, I think you need a shoulder pad, especially if you're an, uh, a seasoned citizen and you're going to play the fiddle, because you will darn certain cripple yourself in a short order of trying to hold the fiddle up where it needs to be. Now you can hold the fiddle down here, and I'm not going to profess one way or the other what what's best, uh, but. Uh, so, but I prefer to hold it up under my chin. That's the way all the guys down in Boone County, Missouri used to do. I never saw too many guys, except for old Doc Weiniger over in uh, Callaway County. He would hold his down low, but most guys held it up here. But they didn't use any kind of shoulder pad. Sometimes they might have a homemade pad or something, like held on with a rubber band, a sponge, something. But if you just get one of these type of shoulder pads, there's all different ones. Just get the simplest 
least expensive. This is a Kuhn, I think, K-U-N. It's made in Canada, or was designed in Canada anyway. But it's pretty good. It just comes right on and off, and it's adjustable. So I, I definitely use a shoulder pad. I just I just think in the long run for your health, because holding the fiddle is a very unusual thing. Uh, it can hurt you. You know, you're twisting your arm. You're holding this thing here. You're clamping down like that. Okay, so that's one piece of gear I think you ought to have for sure. The other thing is I would get one of these little Diodario tuners, or maybe they're knockoffs, but it just comes on and off. It's got a little clamp. Uh, to me, it's the best one uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it does pick up the note really fast just because it's clamped onto your body fiddle. So it picks the note up instantly. Uh, and then the other thing is I like about it is I've not lost one of these yet. The old clip-on ones, you know, you go to somebody's house and clip it on, tune, blink, 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 set it down, go home. Now I'm out another $20 for a tuner. You leave it at, on a table in a bar or something like that. So I would get, those are two things I'd get right away. And you can go to that gear a link I put on our Facebook page and see where to get those. I think I have Amazon links on there, but you can get them at your local music store or musician's friend online. They're widely available. So that's a D Adario. I can never say that. Dario. So we talked about a couple of things you need, how to check to make sure it's in proper working order, because I can't do that for you but remotely. But And that can make a huge difference on whether you're going to be happy with the results you get. So let's talk about holding the instrument first. For one thing, it's not made of cobwebs, you know, it's 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 pretty pretty stout. Don't be afraid to handle it, you know. Don't toss it across the room, but you know, I I know when I first picked up a violin, I was like, so where where was I? Let's see. So we're gonna talk about holding the violin now. Uh so uh I'll look at the chat afterwards. You guys can comment as much as you want. Uh so so we're talking about holding the violin. So you want to, you know, I I again I'm a proponent of holding it under your chin. Okay, so so like like thusly. And you don't want to, you want to try to avoid having the neck in the palm of your hand. So I try to, but you know, again, anything to do with fiddle, anything I tell you, you'll find 10 people doing it just the opposite of what I tell you and sound great. So there's a lot of room for uh, variation and personal, uh, personal ideas and personal things that work for some people won't work for other people. Okay, so, uh, so let's, let's see here. So, so again, I try to keep a fiddle up off my up off my uh, up off my palm of my hand. No, you can do this, but I think eventually that will lead to problems with your wrist here. So you want to you want to hold it out like this. Uh, so if you got if you got your fiddle up and again, especially all the newbies, you know, just just stick it under your under your chin here. And I'm going to talk about something else here related to that. You want to be supporting the fiddle between your thumb and kind of this little point on your on your hand right here so between those watch that see that's kind of where i keep it and the reason for that is again you don't want to be holding the fiddle up with your arm necessarily and i usually say uh, you know 70 30 60 40 in other words most of the weight of the instrument should be held by the shoulder pad and your chin against your against your shoulder here that way, you're not clenching the fiddle, because that's, that's another thing you tend to do when you're starting out. You know, you're so intent on making your fingers move the right place that you start clenching, you start clenching the fiddle. So, so let's not do that. Okay, so, but playing the fiddle is a lot like, you know, patting your head and rubbing your stomach, because you're doing a lot of things at once. Uh, it's not so tough with a mandolin or a guitar, it kind of holds itself there. But here, you're holding this thing up, then you're going to move your fingers, and then this horrible thing comes into play. And so let's talk about the bow. So again, uh, go when you get your get somebody to look at your fiddle to make sure it's in playable shape. Uh, get get someone to look at your bow at the same time. Your whole rig. Uh, the bow can make a big difference, but bows can be terrifically expensive. And if you're just starting out, you know I recommend one of these kind of fake Pernambuco. That's the wood that bows are made from uh, these Chinese, imported Chinese fiberglass bows. Ha usually have pretty good hair in them and they're perfectly serviceable. Uh, if you have an old wooden bow, taking get it hair is okay. The problem is uh, uh, if it's not a really good wooden bow, in a very short order, if not, hasn't already happened, the price of bow rehair and the price of these imported bows is about to intersect. And so it's gotten to the point almost where if you have one of these Chinese fiberglass bows, 
and again, if, for beginners, I'm talking, uh, when the hair wears out, you're almost as well off to throw the bow away and get a new bow because it's about the same price for hair as it is for the bow. And they're very consistently manufactured, I found, too. All right, so how do you hold the bow? But that's another thing, that's another thing we can go on about. Now, I don't use a proper violinist to hold, uh, but Taylor McBain showed me how to hold the bow. And uh, I don't grip up here. I know you see some people doing that. And again, there's some players you might admire who do that, but I'm going to tell you it's better to start holding it proper back here because you want to use the whole length of the bow at some point to, to play the tunes you're playing. Okay, so let me have a little sip here. All right, so, uh, uh, so let's look at how we're going to hold the bow. I kind of hold it like it was a pencil, sort of. Uh, I put I put my thumb. Now you don't want to stick your thumb all the way through like that. You want to have your thumb kind of back here. Now you know proper. I think a proper violinist told that the thumb would be straight in on the stick like that. But I kind of put the fat part of my thumb here, and uh, then I just kind of spread my fingers out across the top with my pinky kind of back here by by the uh, this the the uh, button here, the, turn, the part you turn to tighten the bow, and then the rest kind of spread out. And you know, there's a little leather grip. I kind of keep my thumb between the frog and that leather grip, like, like that. You see that? And then I put my index finger on that leather grip. Okay. Okay, so uh, so let's see here. So that that's a, that's all you need to know about holding the bow, I think, for right now. But again, you don't want to grip it too tight, but you got to hold it tight enough, of course, so it doesn't fall and break. Uh, all right, so let's talk about now getting started putting these two things together. Okay, so one of the things I want you to practice because we're only going to do this once a week, so you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to practice uh, practice what we do. Uh, you got a week to do it, so. Every day, play a little bit, but not too much. You don't want to hurt yourself, especially if you're just starting again. You can really like mess yourself up, get oh, shoulder hurting, wrist hurting. The violin is a very, uh, especially when you're starting out and you don't have developed a comfortable feel for playing, you can really like madly uh, end up uh, at the chiropractor, you know, or end up uh, getting uh, putting a hot salve on your, on icy hot on your wrist, shoulder every night. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do then is we're just going to, we're just, we're just going to set the, now, let's see, we'll even back up a little more. So, does everyone know the names of the strings? Of course, this is G, the fat one, D, A, E, and, a, and we'll go on and learn all the notes up to what I'd call what would be the seventh fret of the mandolin. Not today, of course, but ultimately, because that's everything we play in what they call first position. Okay, so, so but first let's just, let's just get, uh, get crazy with it here now. Let's, Let's put, now, by the way, I'll refer to some other things on the bow as we go along. The frog and the tip, okay? So we're going to start with the bow right up by the frog, okay? And we're just going to make a pull. And a push. Okay. So, um... <clears throat> Now, what did it sound like? Well, it probably sounded like all kind of crazy things, right? Because if you're just, if that's the first time you draw a bow across a string on the fiddle, you're going to go, my gosh, why am I doing this? This is ins utterly insane. And everyone around you will go, why are you doing this? That's utterly insane because it sounds terrible. So, so the, the way you, you have to determine how much pressure you use. And the pressure is determined. It's a, kind of a bit of a fulcrum. Uh, you've got, you know, the fulcrum point is your thumb. That's kind of where everything is balanced on your thumb. So you got the weight of the bow here. That, if you just let the weight of the bow play, you'll get, you can get not a bad note, you know, depending on the fiddle. But then using, if this is a fulcrum point, you know, or, or place that the thing's mounted, if you push down with your index finger, you get more pressure. going to do between the time uh, I between this time and next week is take on both strings uh, on both strings on all four strings 
Do start right by the frog. Do a pull. And a push. And the other thing I'm trying to do, and I'll turn sideways a little bit, is to make my bow go in a straight line. There's a lot of things to think about at once, I'm telling you. That's why we're not fingering yet at all. We're just holding the fiddle, and we're moving the bow back and forth. Okay, then... the D string down the A. Church. <laughs> and then the E. Now, to get a decent sound is a combination of, and again, we're not using the left hand yet at all. Okay, it's a combination of how hard you push down versus how hard fast you pull the bow, okay? So so if I pull the bow very fast with not much pressure, I get this kind of wispy, fluty sound. Uh, like, like the, actually they do, that, that is actually a technique. I think there's a, there's a, there's a Latin or Italian name for that, what that is. That's a, a fluty sound. And so uh, the other extreme of that is this. Okay, where no note comes out at all. So you want to be somewhere between those two. In other words, somewhere between fluey, breathy sound and that sound. And that's just something you have to fight with and play with a lot, a lot. You have to just play. I just can't tell you how many hours you're in for. <laughs> the, pe the people on the chat here who already play know how many hours you're in for. And still, the thing does not cooperate. Uh, you hear us playing in, on the Big Fiddle Show, and sometimes I'll have a string will whistle or some note will come out that I don't know where that came from. On some tune, I played a zillion times. So it's, it's a very uncooperative instrument, to say the least. Uh, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Is uh, You're just going to take some time practicing pulling the bow back and forth across the strings and at different speeds with different, amount, different amounts of pressure till you get the sweetest, nicest, round sound you can possibly get out of your fiddle. And that'll take you a whole week, believe me. Uh, so, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some things you can do to play your fingers. And I've got a tune we're going to work on, a little tune. Now this doesn't mean you have to read music. Let's see, where did I put that? Did I put it up here? Yeah, here it is. So this is a little chart. I will upload this to the Facebook page and I will include a link to it in the newsletter uh, that's going to go out either today or tomorrow morning. And uh, so we're going to play a little coming around the mountain. Now look at what we've got here. That is uh, a chart of, of the fingerboard and with no indications of the time each note is supposed to be played. And, but it tells you which finger to use. So let's back up a little bit. And that, but that's the tune we're going to be working on. Coming around the mountain. Dee, 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 like that. Okay, so, but let's talk about our fingers now. Okay, so we're going to number our fingers. This guy doesn't play any notes that I know of. Unlike on a guitar, you can hold, make him play a note on the E string. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We're going to number our fingers on our left or right hand if you're playing left handed. Okay, one, two, three, four. So now there are certain patterns, ways to hold your fingers to get notes to come out, okay? But first thing we're going to do is we're just going to play, we're going to play on the D, most of this tune, if you'll look at this tune here, is on the middle strings, the D and A. And this, so here is the, uh, the, the G string is the lower one, and the E string is the one on top. And that's like two lines of music there. That's not really music, again, it's like a tablature. This is the only time we'll use tab in this whole deal, but it's useful to start out. So, and the numbers represent the finger numbers. So, zero is open string, O is open string, and then the first finger, and the third finger, and the second finger, okay? So we're not using the fourth finger either. And there's not much, there's nothing on the E string in this tune, and it looks like there's one note on the G string, okay? So, let us figure out 
how to hold our fingers to make these different nuts, okay? So back here, so if I take my fingers and put them like that, that's kind of the inverse of the live long and prosper. But if I put these two fingers together like that, and I think about how these fingers are going to lay on fingerboard, and this over here where my thumb is, since it's too short, we'll call that the open string, okay? So if I just put my fingers, we're going to play, we're going to play on the G string because it's easiest to, to get to. You know, you have to, uh, you know, the fiddle bridge is angled like that, right? It, it's uh, curved. So you have to tilt your bow to approach and play on the different strings. And unfortunately, the tilt isn't very much and you can end up playing a string you don't want to play at first. That's something that really is an, another challenging bit of playing the fiddle right off the bat, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so let us play with this pattern of our fingers, okay? I'm going to show you what that means. So if I play open string, and I don't care whether you pull or push at this point, okay? Just, I'm starting at the tip and pushing. Now my first finger is going to go down Find that note. Remember I said now, I've got my fingers spaced like this, so I'm gonna play open. Now I'm gonna put the next finger down. So remember, it's there's a space there, so you need, need to imagine that there's a space on the fingerboard. And the next finger is right next to that. The next note is right next to that finger. Then the open D. Now I'm gonna use that same pattern again. Okay, so here we go. Listen, listen one time. That's, that's a scale, isn't it? Listen. Okay, so that's one of your assignments, is to play that G scale on the G and D strings. And then we're going to go one step further from that. We're almost done here today because uh, I don't want to give you too much. So we're just about finished here. So I'm going to quit right there. You know what to do playing the tune, uh, uh, playing that scale. So, so I'm going to end the stream right now.